So, how long does it take to be fluent in a language and how many hours per week do I need to practice and what method do you use? So here are all some common questions from my new students. Hi everyone on Education Monsters, I'm Aureli and I'm an online French and English tutor and I've worked in neuroscience research for many years and I'd love to share with you some tricks and tips on how to teach and learn better. And I'm also the podcast host of Education Monsters, which you can find on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So go check it out if you're interested in hearing Francophone and Anglophone guests talking about multicultural education using all kinds of accents from all around the world. So go check it out. And so today we're going to talk about fluency and how long does it take to be fully bilingual. Since I've had this question so many times, it means that I could also refer my students to this video and be like, hey, go check it out. I've answered this question for you. Well, so many things. First of all, what is your starting point? And how did you start learning? And when did you start learning? If you started before 18 years old, it means that you have more chances to become bilingual or to have a better accent in that language. And also, if you grew up in a bilingual household, you'll have an easier time to learn a third one. Second of all, what's your perceived time investment versus your actual commitment? And this is impacted by your schedule. So we all have lives besides learning. And let's face it, we also have like families and friends and other work obligations. So we need to take that into account. And just like make sure that you're not rushing too much into a path where you're supposed to walk. So it's not necessary to book like an hour every day, but just try to be consistent because it happens that, you know, you want to start learning fast. You have like a trip coming up, but like then your motivation goes down. Just like take that into account. It doesn't mean that you won't get there, but just make sure that time is necessary. Even if it's just like 15 minutes a day. Third, consider and accept your personal pace as an individual. Have you always been like a slow learner or a fast learner? And you have to respect your own pace, again, because this is only a question that you can answer. Only you know if you're going to learn faster or slower. And going slower usually yields better results than cramming. And it's not just cramming, but I'm, I'm also not going to, sh to throw shade on cramming because there's so many pros and cons to it. And also, like, raise your hands if you're ever procrastinated, you're studying, and all of a sudden you have to study last minute and then it goes great and your exam is fantastic and like it's good it works it's good when you're in school and trying to get a one-time result aka an exam but like learning a language to become fluent it's not exactly like being in school you're not performing for like a one-time grade it's a long-term investment and you're trying to have a sustainable and strong foundation for your grammar and your vocab and so ideally what you want is to use a method called spacing, which is practicing like an hour here, an hour there, and then you space it out over time, which means that you're learning little by little, but then you learn better and more efficiently. You also have to ask yourself the question of grit. Your grit, so what is your grit? It's, do you get easily discouraged? Do you need to discipline yourself to get back to practice? Maybe you could set an alarm around lunchtime time to learn five new words. Or do you feel like your self-esteem goes down if you make mistakes? You have to consider your grit and know that learning a language is hard, but yet it's possible. <laughs> and number four, what are your helpers? So students told me that they use several apps like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone, and it's great because it's super convenient and it's literally on your phone and computer. So it's accessible, sorry, accessible. It's accessible, let's say it, accessible. Accessible, yes, it's accessible, but when you envision yourself speaking fluently, it won't be in front of a screen, it will be with a human being. So the best you can do for yourself is to practice with actual human being, whether it be online or in person with a roommate or family members, just like make sure you practice with people and not just like behind screens because it's like easy, you know, to get into, a routine of not getting scared enough. Here's an interesting example. When I was young, I used to play the piano and I went to my piano lessons every week and I played in front of my teacher, things went fine. But like every year we had to perform in a concert hall in front of all the parents. And of course I was petrified to death. And of course I did less well than usual. Why? because I didn't train in front of people and I was not used to this amount of stress and all so many eyes on me and it's just the worst for like kids and performance, you know, it includes having a public and getting eyes on you 
And that performance anxiety that we're talking about, it's not just for like musicians and artists, but it also happens when you're trying to prefer to perfect speaking a language because we have to be vulnerable and show ourselves and our mistakes and our funny accents to people, not to phones and apps. And in your journey of learning a language, remember that you're learning a form of communication and you need to learn to take hits and to make mistakes and to get corrected by others, even if it's obnoxious. Because performing means that you have to put yourself out there and you have to not be scared of criticism. Of course, it's like easier said than done, but guess what? That's the only option you have because that's how you'll learn. You'll learn by feeling shame and making mistakes and there's no option than that. Even if you're getting shame, force yourself to keep going, like feel shame and just do it, do it, do it and ask yourself for forgiveness later. It's okay. You can indulge in like a Sunday or something. Number five, what's your definition of fluency? And when will you know that you're happy with your level? You can reach fluency by just speaking. And that's why I'm always asking my students, so like, what's your goal? Do you just want to do conversation? Do you just want to like order an egg at a restaurant? Or do you actually care about writing and reading? Would you want to be able to read in, in that language? Or like, I don't know if you're a nerd, maybe you want to go to the library and like read books in that language, whatever. But if you want to learn how to read and write, you have to speak to your tutor about it because then it will adjust your method of learning so it evolves evenly with the conversation. And so just make sure to bring that up and it's going to, it's going to impact how you learn. And number six, that's a very important point, but what languages are you trying to learn? And if you're an Anglophone, researchers have done the work for you and they have put foreign languages into five categories based on how hard it is for an Anglophone to be fluent in it. So like the first language includes Uh, Spanish, French, Norwegian, Italian languages that are pretty close to English in terms of um, letters, in terms of sound. So this first category would take about 23 to 24 weeks to be fluent in it. The second category is a little harder, like languages like German take you about 30 weeks. The third category, getting harder. Indonesian, Swahili, it would take you 36 weeks. And the fourth category, oh my gosh, good luck with that. But Hindi, Thai, 44 weeks. And the fifth category obviously includes languages that don't even share the same alphabet and don't even share like the same muscles. Like here, like it would hurt. Like Mandarin, Arabic, Japanese, Korean. And those will take up to 88 weeks. So a lot of people disagree with it, including me, because we all have different paces and it depends on so many things. But most likely... You've also had other languages exposure, not just English, because it's hard to have like this precise science when it comes to learning because we're all different and we're all impacted by previous languages that we know that we've heard on on TV, on the radio. So we're not just like enclosed into a box, like obviously we've had previous language exposure. So we're not all coming from the same spot, like we all have differences, even in terms of brain differences. But hey, you never know, maybe you're a fast learner and maybe you'll just make it there earlier than everybody else. So here's the conclusion and bottom line of this video. Just don't be afraid to bother people to get exposure because that's what you need. And I repeat this, exposure. If there's anything that can help with fluency, it's to practice in front of an audience instead of hiding behind a screen or an app. And you can do better than speaking to a device, like honestly. You can check out community groups and there's many groups on language exchange, on Facebook, on Monolingo. So don't be shy, talk to humans, it will accelerate your fluency. And if you're struggling with people and if the people are sort of uh, impatient and they switch back to English, which happens a lot, you can just politely ask them, hey, do you mind if I practice my foreign language? And if you don't have the patience yourself or you're simply not into it, just like, you know, move on. There's better days from this and also don't take it personal. We can always find a better opportunity, but just remember to, to not forget that. And here's the thing. You can never impose this on anyone, but there's a lot of people out there who are willing to help. And think about this. Think about the last time someone asked you for help. How did you feel? You felt good, right? So think about asking somebody for help. They're going to feel the same amount of good because helping people brings a ton of benefits to the brain, like including generosity, gratitude, which helps you light up the interior cingulate cortex. And that's the neuroscience part of me, but that's part, this part of the brain that's 
um, impact that's um, affecting your reward anticipation, your decision making, ethics, morality, impulse control, and creating this healthy and virtuous cycle. And also, don't forget to learn with purpose, so make this learning relevant to you. Because if you're learning a new language, it doesn't have to be a language, but like any skill in general, learn with a goal in mind so that you can look forward to accomplishing it. Whether it be a trip, speaking with somebody you know, a date you're trying to impress, or learning with your kids for a fun family activity, or connecting with a certain type of food or movie that inspired you. But the sooner you start, the sooner you'll answer this question for yourself. So... Comment on the section below, how long did it take you to reach fluency? I hope you have fun and I hope this video was helpful. Happy learning everybody! Bye!